Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be installing a heated steering wheel in my 2019 GMC Canyon. This is very similar to what I did in my 2017 Chevy Colorado. Biggest difference being this is a three post airbag system on this steering wheel, whereas the Colorado was a two post airbag. Somewhere in 2018, GM decided to change the design of the airbags, which necessitated a change in design of the steering wheels. So I was not able to swap that heated steering wheel from that total truck into the new truck. The three post airbag just means that the airbag has three posts on it that attaches to the steering wheel. It's a little bit different removal, but for the most part, everything else is almost exactly the same. Another thing that GM changed was some design of the, the airbag connectors changed just slightly. Instead of having like a, a, a tab on the back that pops up, there's actually little spring-loaded clips these orange tabs need to be pulled back and they're, they're spring loaded. Otherwise, this is the same type of clock spring that you'll need that has the heated steering wheel connector port on it. This steering wheel comes standard with white stitching all around, but my truck is an all-terrain. I used a stain marker, Sharpie marker, and stained all of the stitching red. Now this wheel is from a truck equipped with a heated steering wheel. It's, it is a new wheel, but it has the white stitching around the outside. Some other people have done this. They've actually used a stain pen from Sharpie to actually just stain the white threads red. And apparently this, um, this marker does the trick. I'm going to do that to my stitching here so that it matches my interior well. I'm going to stain this first before I put it in the truck just because it'll be easier to manipulate the wheel. Then we'll do an install showing how to remove that three post airbag in the newer truck. If you're a 2018 truck you may have a two post, you may have a three post. You really have to check your equipment first if you're wanting to do this upgrade. So I just did the one coat for now. I'm probably going to do another coat after I let this one kind of set up and dry for a while. Just have a little tissue readily available so that when you're going along the threads and you get some on the leather, you can wipe it off as you go so it's not sitting on top of the leather and staining the leather. I'm pretty pleased with the way it comes out. It, it looks pretty good and after I do two coats, I think it'll look even better. The stain pen seems to do the trick pretty well. All right, so after another coat with the stain pen, I'm very pleased with the results on the threads. They are a lot darker after the second coat, and I think you can tell just by looking on the video. I think it comes up pretty clear in the video that that stain uh, darkened those threads considerably compared to uh, what they were after the first coat. So let's dig into the install and get this in the truck. So to remove the steering wheel, you actually need to have the wheel in this orientation so that you can get to the third post, which is on the back side of the steering wheel through here. But otherwise it's the same. You have the two holes on either side of the steering wheel. You'll use a small Allen wrench to pop through and release the tabs, similar to the, the 2017. Having the steering wheel like this, I suggest you have the vehicle running, flip the wheel over, turn the vehicle off, and let the wheel lock into place, then remove your battery cable. So first we're going to release this airbag. So here's a shot inside of that three post steering wheel. So there are the two holes on the side. I've already got this Allen wrench inserted. You can see it moving on the right. That's where you will push and release that metal tab for the right post. Then similarly, for the post on the left, you will insert it through here. Now, for the post on the bottom, you have to have that wheel flipped over like I just showed you. And once you do that, you have access to release this tab here like so. Releasing those two side posts are really kind of difficult. It's all by feel. You really can't see anything. 
just take your time, and if you start to get frustrated, step away and come back to it. But the post will slightly pop up the airbag a little bit, and then you can go to that back one on the on the back, the third post, and release the, the bar, and that third post will release, and that will allow you to remove the entire airbag. Once you have all three posts removed, the airbag comes out just like in the previous model. And there's that airbag connector with the spring-loaded tabs. Those orange tabs are spring-loaded. So you actually need to pull them both up at the same time to release the connector. So I've got two little flathead screwdrivers, and I'm going to pry up both of them at the same time, and then the connector comes loose. I'll do the same for the other side, and they're both loose. Here's a shot of that airbag connector with the three posts. You can compare it to a two-post design. Next, we'll remove that bolt that holds the steering wheel to the column. It is a T50. There you go. The next thing I'm going to do is remove this connector right here. There's just a small tab on top, and then it pops right out. Now you can remove the steering wheel from the column. Be careful not to damage your airbag cords underneath here. The next step in this process is removing this top trim from the steering column and the bottom trim. The top is just held in with pins along this seam here and along the left side as well. You can't really see because of this wire, but along this side. So basically just use a pry tool and start working your way around the trim and getting it up and released. This stock for the windshield wipers is the one that's mostly in the way. So you just have to kind of finesse the whole thing around. It helps to have the steering wheel pushed down and pulled out to its outermost position, which I have it now. And then you just have to work this piece out by kind of maybe pulling that all the way down and then rotating it out over the top. sort of gets caught up on the back side here like so and then you can get that out of the way for the bottom trim there's a couple of seven millimeter screws on either side of the steering column and then there's also one straight up under here in one of these holes so just use a small seven millimeter socket screwdriver So here is the connector on the steering column for the heated steering wheel. I've also checked the fuse box to make sure there is a fuse for it. That's how I knew this truck was pre-wired like my Colorado was. Next step is we need to swap out this clock spring. First remove the connector on the back side of the clock spring on the left. It uses a simple tab and all you need to do is depress it and then pull it from the clock spring. So using a flathead screwdriver, that locking tab just needs to be pried out of the connector. Then you can simply depress and remove it like regular. Next, there's just four little Phillips screws that mount the clock spring to the column. You can simply remove those one at a time. Then your clock spring is released. The new clock spring seats right into place. There's two little nubs on the bottom left and the top right that sort of link it to where it needs to be. And then you can reinstall those four Phillips screws. Then come around to the top side and get your two connectors and install. And then take the locking tab and slide it in. Then there's hooking up the heated steering wheel with the clock spring connector, which is on the bottom of the clock spring. That's this connector right here. Just kind of route it over and connect it. Then you're just left with your two airbag connectors and this locking tab 
and then this connector is for the heated steering wheel to the actual wheel and you'll plug in your steering wheel to this connector here. Using your seven millimeter screws, you can reinstall the two forward facing screws on the trim. And remember there is one bottom one underneath here. The top piece of trim is kind of tricky to get back in, but you need to feed it over the wiper stock first and then just kind of rotate it down and around to get it down on top to where it needs to go. Then you can line up all the seams and pop in all the clips. And just make sure your seam is all nice and tight around the trim all the way back into there too. Next we're going to reinstall the wheel. So you see this little notch here which you can tell there's like a flat spot in the splines of the wheel. That's where you need to line up onto this post here. There's the notch in the center and then the flat spot in the splines. So if you remember, we took the wheel off, it was upside down. So that makes sense. We're going to reinstall this wheel upside down. See, so I've got everything lined up nice and good. I'll take my T50 and just get it threaded by hand for now just to get it started then I'm going to take my connector here on the bottom plug it into the clock spring Then I've got my other connector here which is for the heated steering wheel which goes to this connector And then you're just left with the two connectors for the airbag. I'm going to give it a shot with my torque wrench too to 30 foot pounds. Then the last step is orienting your airbag correctly and then inserting the connectors. The pink goes to the pink, the purple goes to the purple. There's only one way for them to go in. You just need to line up the notch on the connector of both of both connectors. So then they just pop right in. To reinstall the airbag, you simply line up the three posts and then push it back into place like you're going to honk the horn. As a final step, I'm going to test the functionality of the heated steering wheel button. Looks like it turns on. The wheel should start to heat up in just a couple of seconds. Now that it's been on for a couple seconds, I'm going to test this, the heat. So first I'm going to test these buttons here that are not heated. They're showing about 69 degrees. And then if I push it out onto the steering wheel, you can see it bumps up to about 89 or 90 degrees. So that means it's working. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Love it if you subscribed. Stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching. Later.